We've seen that we can calculate Fs max by multiplying the coefficient of static friction for the two materials that are touching one another by the normal force exerted by the surface on the object resting on it. And we can calculate kinetic friction by multiplying coefficient of kinetic friction by normal force. Let's do some examples. Here's our first question. We've got a four kilogram concrete slab and we're pulling it horizontally along a piece of rubber. We need to calculate the frictional force just before the slab starts to move. In other words, the maximum static friction, and then as the slab moves along. From our table of coefficients of friction, we know that for rubber and concrete, the coefficient of static friction is 0, 0,9, and for kinetic friction, 0, 0,7. When an object is on a horizontal surface, then its weight equals the normal force exerted by the surface. The weight of a 4 kilogram object is approximately 40 newtons. Let's just round it off. Actually, you would calculate it by mg, m being the mass 4 kilograms, G being acceleration due to gravity, which on Earth is 9,8 meters per second squared, but we're going to round that off to 10 meters per second squared. So 4 times 10, 40 newtons. So its weight is 40 newtons. The surface is horizontal, so the normal force is also 40 newtons, equal and opposite. So we simply substitute the values in and get our answer Fs max 36 newtons. Fk, 28 newtons. Question 2. A 4 kilogram wooden sled is pulled up a snow-covered slope, which is at 20 degrees to the horizontal. Here's a picture of a wooden sled. You climb to the top of a mountain, and then you sit on the sled, and then you slide all the way down on the snow. We need to calculate the frictional force just before the sled starts to move and as the sled moves. In other words, the maximum static friction and the kinetic friction for the situation. We look on our table of coefficients of friction and we find the wood-snow combination, static friction's coefficient 0, 0,08, kinetic friction's coefficient 0, 0,06. Now we have this object, 4 kilogram sled, on an inclined plane. And so although its weight, like in our previous question, would be approximately 40 newtons, the normal force acting on this sled would not be 40 newtons. It will be less than that because of the fact that it's on an inclined plane. How do we calculate how much the normal force would be? We have to find the component of the weight that acts into the slope, perpendicularly into the slope, and that will be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction to the normal force. Normal force always acts at right angles upwards from a surface. Remember that the slope's angle is the same angle as the angle between the weight, W, and its component into the slope, Wy. So we can calculate Wy's magnitude by W cos 20 degrees. In this question, W is 40 newtons. So 40 newtons times cos 20 degrees gives us 37,59 newtons. That's the magnitude of the component of the weight into the slope, and the normal force balances that component. So the normal force also has a magnitude of 37,59 newtons. We substitute our values into the equation, and we find our answer for static friction and for kinetic friction. Notice that these answers are both less than question one's answers were, even though the object is four kilograms in both question one and question two, and there are two Two reasons for this. In question two, the surfaces were both smoother, decreasing friction, and in question two, normal force was less because the object was on an inclined plane. Now let's add another part to question two. We still have this four kilogram wooden sled. The angle of the slope is still 20 degrees. But now we're asked, how hard must a person pull parallel to the slope upward for the sled to move at a constant velocity? If the sled is going to move at constant velocity, then it must be in equilibrium. There must be no resultant force. The person will have to pull up the slope just as hard as the forces which act on the sled down the slope. What are these forces that act down the slope? There are two of them. One is friction, opposing the motion as the person's pulling the sled upward. And the other force is the component of the sled's weight, which acts parallel to the slope downward. 
We already know how strong frictional force is. We calculated that just now. So what we need to do now is we need to calculate how much is that component of the weight which acts down the slope. Then we can add the two together and find our answer because that answer will be equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force which we need to exert. We've already seen that we can resolve the weight of the object into its component into the slope. Now we can also resolve it into the component down the slope. So we imagine putting a Cartesian plane over this such that the x-axis lies parallel to the slope and we are resolving the weight into the y and x components. So the component of the weight which acts parallel to the slope down the slope can be called wx, the x component of the weight. And since this is a rectangle, that vector equals that vector. And these are right angles. We also know this angle theta here because this angle is the same as the angle of the inclined plane. And in this question, that angle is 20 degrees. So we know that Wx is equal to W times sine 20 degrees. We know that from trigonometry. We substitute in 40 for weight, Wx equals 40 sine 20 degrees, which is 13,68 newtons down the slope. So the person needs to pull against that force as well as friction's force. What is friction's force? We just look back to our previously answered question. The object is moving at constant velocity, so it must be kinetic friction, not maximum static friction that we must use here. So we'd already calculated that kinetic friction in this case was 2,26 newtons. And so we simply add those two forces, which are both acting parallel to the slope down the slope, the component of the weight and kinetic friction, 13,68 plus 2,26, that gives us 15,94 newtons down the slope. So we must exert a force of 15,94 newtons up the slope for this object to move at constant velocity. In other words, for the object to be in equilibrium, for there to be no resultant force and so no acceleration.